Lex Friedman had taught Howard on the show where they spoke about all kinds of things Bethesda, past games, future games, Xbox acquisition and of course Starfield. And it's Starfield I want to focus in this video today because Todd shared some interesting information that we haven't really heard about Starfield yet. So let's look into this. But before we look into it, let's check iniba.com. They offer all kinds of great games for Xbox, PlayStation, PC, and right now they've got a couple of interesting things on sale. So they've got uh, God of War Rangarak on sale. They've got PlayStation uh, cards. Spider-Man on PC is still on sale over here. And of course, November Arrivals. So let's check them out. They've got Evil West, great game I'm actually playing it right now, Spider-Man on PC, Just Dance for Xbox, well, looks like it's a 2023 edition, so something new and fresh, I guess, and a couple of other games as well, so, um, hey, Gotham Knights is uh, for uh, $30, so let's check it out, um, add it to the card, of course, and uh, yeah, let's view the card, by the way, I had that game here for some reason, I don't know why, Either way, um, so that's Gotham Knight. All we have to do now is to proceed to checkout. And right now, all you have to do is just select a payment of your choice and you're done. Remember guys, iniba.com, they've got plenty of great games uh, for Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo. Uh, check iniba.com, link will be in the description of this video below. So check it out. Okay guys, so Let's talk about Starfield. So Todd Howard is the executive director for the game, I think. And uh, well, so he's, a, he's really the head of the whole project, I guess. And um, he was on a sh uh, Lex Friedman show. It's actually quite lengthy interview, to be honest with you, like like over two hours, two, two hours, 40 minutes or something like that. And it's a very interesting t interview because, um, you know, Lex did ask quite a lot of interesting questions like because i mean lex is a gamer by the way i didn't know that but you know actually he had some programmers in the past i guess so yeah um, but he's more like a pc player i guess and um, so he had some like uh john carmack on the show before and stuff so this is not the first time he interviewed a game developer per se but what's interesting is that like he sometimes asks not really obvious questions, which is which makes the show obviously interesting. Um, and um, I'm not really going to summarize this whole show, of course, because they spoke about the past games, they spoke about like the early Bethesda games a lot as well. That's actually most of the show, to be honest with you. They spoke about Elder, Elder, uh, Elder Scrolls games. Uh, not much about Fallout, which I was a bit um, surprised because I'm more of a more of a Fallout guy, to be honest with you. But anyway, they spoke quite a lot uh, about Skyrim and how the uh, the world, um, you know, um, is being built by Bethesda. They spoke a lot of about different game systems and how they interact in in their games and stuff. Um, but um, there was also a segment on Starfield and Xbox acquisition. So uh, first off, let's talk about Xbox acquisition. Then we move on to Starfield news. Uh, first off, uh, he was uh, Todd was asked about how that acquisition, um, I guess, made them feel or made did that change anything for them in terms of um, you know relationship with the Xbox, I guess, and stuff. And uh, Todd Howard said that um, they've been working they 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 had been working with Xbox prior to the acquisition for like decades. Um, and it's nothing new for them, to be honest with you. Now, obviously, the difference now is that, like, all these games are going to be exclusive for Xbox. I mean, like, Starfield, for example, Redfall, etc., etc. So not all of them, um, just some of them. I mean, the new ones, although Elder, Elder Scrolls 6 is supposed to be an X Xbox PC exclusive as well. Um, but he says that, like, they, they've got very good relationship, and this is nothing new. So they've been working on uh, many games in the past and um, you know some of you may not know but this is not the first time uh, Xbox has Bethesda exclusive because some people scream oh Starfield exclusive that's not fair um, maybe it's not fair I guess um, you know uh, but this is not the first time Bethesda made a games uh, exclusive for Xbox like um, was it Morrowind that was and I think it's still 
only available on Xbox when it comes to consoles. That you co you won't find this game on PlayStation, I think. I don't think. Uh, then Oblivion was a timed uh, exclusive for Xbox as well. Um, then there was a port for PlayStation 3 uh, later, but it was terrible. Um, actually, managed the performance. I'm not even sure if they fixed that game uh, for PlayStation 3 later. But it was Oblivion was actually an exclusive for Xbox for a while. So um, yeah, Skyrim was actually like released for both PlayStation and and Xbox 360 at the same time, but. So a lot of these games were exclusives to Xbox in the past, so that's nothing new. And they had this close relationship. It, apparently it was Microsoft that approached uh, Bethesda uh, for Morrowind uh, to become an, a console exclusive uh, console game because, I mean, Xbox back then was uh, more than uh, powerful enough to run that game. Uh, and that was not pretty obvious uh, to run that, that such a game on on um, on a console, and uh, so that's where the whole relationship kind of started. But there's the back in the days was more like more of a PC developer really. So Daggerfall, Arena, and a couple of previous games were mainly for PC. Uh, so that's a, that, that's the, the past thing really. And he basically has said that he likes the the, the uh, he cherished the relationship and stuff and. Uh, I mean, you know, ever since they, they bought them, uh, I guess nothing really changed for them when it comes to the actual relationship and, um, you know, and that kind of stuff. So, you know, he's happy with Xbox, let's just say, right? And the whole acquisition stuff. Um, so that's one thing. Um, now, let's talk about the more specific thing, right? Um, because there's actually, I guess, three things I want to talk about, focus mainly in this game and more on the tech side of things. First off, uh, he did say that um, the fact that they can make Starfield for Xbox only, that allows them to focus more on the on the platform, right? So uh, he just basically said that making game for two platforms, so PlayStation, sorry, Xbox and PC, uh, I guess uh, allows them to focus more on you know these two platforms. So I guess what he's trying to say is that uh, that should uh, make the game to well I guess better technically maybe running game, or looking game on Xbox uh, than it would be if that was if that was to be a multi-platform game. Uh, and remember, Bethesda is not really like a a um, couple of thousand people studio. We're talking about hundreds of people working there. I and mean, even Todd Howard during the interview said a couple of times that, you know, like, yeah, they make, they create these big worlds, but they don't have the biggest game studios, um, studio in the world. They are trying to, uh, I guess, they are trying to make big worlds with, um, I guess, not the biggest studio, if you know what I mean. And, I guess like uh, procedural generation comes into play in, in their games and many other games as well, but uh, that will be uh, used in, in Starfield as well, but uh, it's been used in the past in their previous games as well, like Skyrim, for example. So that's nothing new, right? But when it comes to like uh, all these hundreds of planets that, that are supposed to be in the Starfield game, well, a lot of them are, and a lot of stuff will be procedurally generated. And uh, he actually spoke about these systems that will be implemented or has been implemented in Starfield as well a, a little bit. So that's one thing. Like, you know, he likes the fact that right now, the fact that, uh, Xbo uh, that Starfield is going to be an Xbox PC exclusive uh, allows them to focus more on the, you know, tech side of things as well when it comes to optimization stuff. It's just one less um, console to develop for, right? Uh, he didn't really speak about anything about Xbox Series S. Um, he did spoke about Xbox Series X, you know, praising the console. Uh, he did praise PlayStation 5 as well. I mean, they they do have dev kits. At the end of the day, they're still developing games for PlayStation 5. Like, you know, they provide updates and stuff. So it's not that they don't know PlayStation 5 hardware, but he did say that Xbox Series X is, re is, is really capable console. Uh, so that's good news. Uh, another good news, uh, I will leave the bad news <laughs> um, uh, towards the end, for the end of the video, really. Uh, and it's not really a bad news per se, but, you know. Um, 
when he spoke about the fact that Starfield is being developed for for Xbox as a, as a console exclusive, he also mentioned that uh, Xbox internal tech team is helping them out out with development, meaning that um, you know now they've got like I guess more resources to make Starfield better. So of course they've got their own programmers, engineers, and that kind of stuff. That's like quite uh, bright and stuff. But I guess they m focus more on, on 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 the game systems and stuff. While Xbox engineers, the programmers, and you know, funny enough, I didn't know that, but um, I forgot the name of that team. But like. Um, uh, there is a dedicated team uh, within the Xbox um, game studio, so I guess, which basically helps all developers. There is like a special dedicated team that, uh, I guess, travels around the world helping developers to optimize uh, their game engines for Xbox Series S and X, basically, right? And that's what's happening with Starfield. Like Xbox, that dedicated engineers, Xbox engineers are helping Bethesda to make Starfield to run better uh, on Xbox Series consoles. So that's fantastic news, of course, because that makes that, you know, that, that allows, that, that hopefully will make Starfield a better game, technically speaking, right? I'm not talking about like the quest and that kind of stuff that's not they are there for it's more about uh, you know how do you make the game to perform well how do you make the game to you know take better advantage of the hardware and that kind of stuff um, and I hope that that extra time that they've got right now especially with these engineers will allow Starfield to you know run better especially right and that's where I want to talk about that kind of bad news i mean not really bad news per se i mean okay so about i want to talk about the starfield performance potentially on xbox series uh, s and x um i have no idea how that game will perform on xbox series says it might be 10 tp 30 frames per second for all i care to be honest with you um but xbox series x i do hope that this game will run at 60 frames per second um don't require, I don't require this game to be 4K60, even though it's going to be like a first party title. Uh, it's a huge game and stuff. So all I want is maybe 1440p, 60 frames per second on Xbox Series X. Uh, that's what I want, but uh, is Bethesda going to deliver? Well, he's done an interesting thing. Now, during the interview, Todd Howard did say that he's a more of a console guy. It's interesting because I thought I also I always thought of Todd Howard and Bethesda more more like a PC developer. Of, of a, I, I thought of them as more of a PC developers. So I thought that Todd Howard is actually just a, like a, a PC guy. But you know, he basically said that he likes consoles. He likes to you know uh, basically play comfortably on the on the on the big TV in front of big TV on the couch and that kind of stuff with the controller in hand and um, so that's obviously cool news but he also said that he doesn't mind 30 frames per second games again so this is not the first time he said that you know he doesn't really care about performance like not necessarily you know he doesn't want his games to to lose frames, but he said that like for all he cares, 30 frames per second is just fine. Um, so now I don't want to say that that oh that that means that the Xbox Series X version is going to be 30 frames per second, but that does worry me a little bit because you know clearly in that interview he did say that um, I guess 60 frames per second is not their main focus, and I get it. You know the ma their main focus is is um, um, about you know all these different systems to make all these different systems to work uh, and i get it but you know um i really do hope that starfield will be 60 um first off it's a next gen game meaning that it's not going to be held back by xbox one anymore 
so hopefully they will that extra time they've got with these xbox engineers will allow them to you know optimize the code better for xbox series x and and force that game to run at 60 frames per second at lower resolution on xbox series x at least um so yeah i mean i i mean at the end of the day worst case scenario you know i'll just play on pc i don't i don't have a problem with that uh but you know I like to play on the console sometimes just to chill out with uh, like like Todd Howard with a controller in hand, right? And um, yeah, so we'll see. Uh, interesting interview. Like um, I will have to watch it again because I was kind of like in the middle of something and listening it. So I probably missed a lot of things. You will find the link in the description below to that interview. Um, it's quite long to... 0.4 hours long but uh, i think it's worth it because yeah there's quite a lot of information about how bethesda works really and you know a little bit of a, you know there's a history when how todd howard actually joined the gaming industry and that kind of stuff so yeah well listen starfield is one of my most anticipated games of next year uh, in general there's actually 2023 is going to be packed with great games uh just you know the beginning of the of the year forza motorsport starfield uh, dead space a remake um alan wake 2 apparently but although i'm not sure if that's the beginning of 2023 or late atomic heart um diablo 4 and redfall like so many games so yeah, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, this is still not the, the 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 format I want to go with in the future. Like, you know, uh, the proper reboot of the channel is going to be probably be next two weeks or something like that. So I will have be making that kind of type of videos in the meantime. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of busy with stuff right now. So um, yeah, guys, so that's the video. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Thanks for support. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to share with the video like uh, subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you all in the next one take care